Hello everyone, it's Harry aka YouTube Driver. I hope you're all okay. This is my first video, so I hope it's not an absolute shambles, but we'll get straight into it. So I wanted to start with a video looking at the real world costs of motorsport and karting and look at how easy or not easy it is to get into karting. And it's a fitting first video as it kind of dictates where I'm hoping to go with this channel. So yeah, let's get into it. So I've actually been lucky enough to race cars in the past and while I explain very quickly about this and why it's relevant I'll put some footage on the screen just as some of my past racing as it's obviously better than looking at my face. So essentially I always raced at the lowest level of owner driver karting and then rental karting but from a middle class family we were always competing with the absolute lowest amount of money and I'm sure a lot of people can relate to this it's very frustrating as we could never really compete with the top guys because of that. So what I did to start this video was I googled karting and I followed the link for the Motorsport UK website which was top of the list and it straight away hits you with this, karting a sport for all and there's a massive irony in this as the photo behind is of drivers in carts and equipment that would be unaffordable to such a huge amount of aspiring carters even if you look at the helmets of the people in the photo. I did a quick google for a quote of a helmet painting Obviously that doesn't include the helmet, that's just to get it painted like they have. And I found this up to £1,000 and sometimes more just to have a helmet painted. That's obviously more than most people can afford on a whole year cut it is to get into. But basically Motorsport UK detail a set pathway of getting into karting. And I've combined this with quite a bit of other research to create an overview of karting participation in the UK. And here it is. So this is that overview, and I'm not saying it's perfect. Some people start off at different stages. The order can differ for some people, but this is pretty much the way that Motorsport UK say to get into karting, and it does provide a good overview of the opportunities out there. So what it says is, first of all, after you've practiced a bit of your local tracks, had a bit of fun, got to grips with basically how a go-kart works, they advise you starting the BIKC, which is the British Indoor Karting Championship. Following that, they suggest a Club 100 series, and then after that, there's a few different avenues you can go down. What we'll do is we'll delve into each of the options, have a look at how affordable they are, and whether they provide good options for fair and competitive racing. So, starting with the BIKC, it's a multi-round competition, starting with qualifying rounds at your local track, and then progressing to national finals. And there are some really good parts and sort of aspects of this series. For one, it's accessible. Most people have a track that's local or relatively local to them. It's an elimination style process. So as you progress through the competition, the field of drivers should be better. So you should be matched against people with sort of similar abilities as you progress. But there are still a few issues. While it's cheaper than a lot of other options, it still costs to go to team sport for a simple two times 15 minute practice session, 37 pounds. And from experience, these are often hindered with so many red and yellow flags. So it's very, very difficult to practice consistent laps. So you do need quite a lot of these sessions to get up to a competitive level. And this can quickly add up. If you consider 37 pounds once a week for a month, round up to say 40 pounds once a week, if you consider travel and you've also got your own equipment costs, that's 160 pounds a month, which isn't ridiculous but it's definitely not cheap and in addition to this car equality is also a major issue with team sport so due to the carts being used for members of the public the setup and speed of each car can differ massively because obviously some carts can get damaged and things like that so that's the BIKC summed up and if we just go back to our overview we'll add a quick note on there to summarize what we've got so far in general it's not a bad option at all for somebody looking to begin in racing and start their start their karting career. So after this, what Motorsport UK recommends is Club 100. So what we'll do now is we'll have a quick look into that. So Club 100 is self-stated to be the fastest arrive and drive kart championship in the UK, which I'm not disputing, and that is actually one of the main positives of this series. You do get to drive relatively fast racing carts with two stroke engines, which is always a great experience. Further to that, the carts are built specifically for the series for Club 100 which means they're maintained well and cart equality is obviously quite good 
in addition to that, the series has weight classes, so it is sort of as fair a level, level playing field as you can get for arrive and drive racing. And thirdly, there is a good field and a good level of competition with Club 100. You only have to look at some of the other YouTubers who have rated in it, which includes Super GT and Jimmy Broadbent. But again, when we start looking at the costs of this series, it's definitely not cheap. It's not outrageous like some of the series that we'll get onto a little later. But yeah, it's definitely not cheap. So you're just looking at the Club 100 costs. I use myself as an example. I would be in the senior class and I would choose the sprint series as this is actually by far the cheapest uh, sort of version you can race in. You can enter the sprint series, you can do more of an endurance style series, but the sprint series is the cheapest. So entry for that costs £205 per round, but practice on a Friday is £188 for one hour, or then around £100 through the weekend, but that's only for half an hour. So that's the entry cost of £205 per round, plus we'll say £188 for that one hour practice. Your cost for that weekend, that race event, is already up to £393. And if we consider travel, possible accommodation costs, it they could easily add up to sort of £50 as a minimum. Bear in mind, you've also got to have your own equipment. So if we add that £50 on covering a few of the extra stuff onto the original price that we got for the race entry and the testing, that takes it to... £443 and there's 11 rounds through the year so that is an annual total of £4,873. So we'll go back to the overview again and just add what we've learned. In general good racing, great racing, good cars but I would argue very expensive. So after this we've got three pathway, pathways we can go down. We have two stroke racing, four stroke racing and then arrive and drive racing, some other versions of arrive and drive racing. So starting on two stroke racing, I'll be honest, there's not overly much to say about this, other than to be competitive, you need a money tree and essentially a winning lottery ticket. I'm not even going to discuss the positives of this series because it is pointless due to how expensive and unrealistic it is for the majority of people. I mean, just look at some of these costs. So road tax carting is a class of two stroke carting and for that you need a Rotax car which is essentially a go-kart with a Rotax engine. A Rotax Max engine which is for a senior driver like myself with all the necessary add-ons which are required to be fully competitive is £2,658. People say the rebuild intervals on these engines are around 20 hours of use with rebuilds costing between £300 and £700. So the costs are already extortionate if we just look at the engines alone. Then something else to factor in would be at least a couple of sets of new tyres per race weekend, probably one for qualifying and then one for some of the races later in the day when the tyres lose their edge. And none of what we've discussed includes actual cost for the race entry, testing, fuel, the car, the chassis itself, wheels, tools, accommodation, equipment, all that. So once again, we'll just note this on the overview, that two-stroke only driver racing is essentially out of the question unless you have an unholy amount of money. And the sad thing about this is the opportunities for talented drivers to be spotted and supported largely, almost exclusively come from two-stroke karting. So you can see why this whole situation, this whole system is flawed. And in brief, four-stroke racing is a less extreme version of two-stroke racing so let's break it down a bit. First of all, we'll look at the positives. In general, it is cheaper. Four-stroke engines by their nature work at lower RPMs. So engine rebuilds are less frequent and are less important. This obviously, obviously helps keep the cost down. And while four-stroke series are generally competitive, they are not stupidly competitive like two-stroke. And thirdly, a four-stroke racing car can teach you a lot of valuable lessons and transferable skills for other karting and driving series. The main issues with four-stroke owner driver karting as I see it are one, you don't get anywhere near the same level of recognition or, or opportunities as you would in two-stroke racing. Secondly, there are still drivers at the top of competitive four-stroke grids who can afford monthly engine rebuilds, new tyres, meaning again 
it's not an entirely level playing field. And thirdly, you are still responsible for the cost of the car itself. So back to the overview, it's becoming quite clear. Two-stroke carting is extremely expensive. Four-stroke is a lot more reasonable, however, still expensive, especially if you want to be at the very top of the competitive grids. And this leads us to the final option, which is arrive and drive racing. And obviously one of these is one of these options is Club 100, which we've already spoke about earlier. But there are a few other series out there too, so we'll have a look at them. So I started looking at this by googling arrive and drive karting, and I found this that came up, Cobra Racing. And I've never seen this before. It's new next year, and I'll tell you what, it's actually really impressive. So I'll break down the facts of this series. It's an arrive and drive series, but in two-stroke road tax carts. And it's £2,000 plus VAT entry for a 10-round championship. But that means the cost per round is only £200. And this is insane when you think back to the cost of Club 100, which was just shy of £500 per round. And in this series, there are financial prizes, both on each race day and for the end championship, in addition to a full media crew filming each event. And apparently they achieve such a low cost of entry by having championship sponsors that subsidise the costs. So this looks like a very good option. So quickly back to the overview, we'll just add that on. And one other series I want to discuss here, which is a four-stroke arrive and drive series, is the BRKC. And this is quite close to home, as I actually raced in and won the very first round of the BRKC. And it's come a heck of a long way since then, and it is actually a really, really good option. So let's have a quick look at that. This is the BRKC. It's probably one of the best options out there at the moment in terms of racing, affordability, value, and opportunities. The thing is, it's just a one-off event in the year, so it's just one single event run over a single weekend, but the entry is only £190, including VAT. And for the winner, there's a cash prize of £1,000, and also a place on Team GB for the Karting World Championship. Not only this, but it is organised incredibly well. Kart equality is as good as it gets for arrive and drive, and the level of competition is incredibly high. And now just to note, there are a few other series out there which are offering sort of kind of different takes on karting so there's the DRS series the Daniel Ricciardo series which is two stroke racing but with carts and engines controlled by the series themselves to ensure a playing a level playing field another one is something called total zero karting which is an electric arrive and drive kart series without going into it too much it seems really po positive but it is still 480 pounds to enter each round if you are aged 12 to 16 years old. So this screen here is essentially what we've got. And the take home notes from it are, karting is incredibly difficult to afford. At present, there are some options for affordable and fair racing, most notably in the UK being the BRKC. But essentially we have a situation in the UK where opportunities for aspiring drivers and carters are almost exclusively limited to individuals with super high incomes with a few exceptions such as the BRKC and a few of the other series we touched on. But therefore, sim racing is growing and can provide better, more realistic opportunities for most people. Thank you very much for listening and watching this first video. I hope you found it sort of informative. Yeah, we've got some funny stuff lined up. We've got some funny sim racing challenges with a close friend of mine, so we've got that coming up. Uh, we'll get some sim racing, possibly some karting footage. Essentially, we'll try and get some motorsport, sim, karting related footage onto the channel that's good to watch. So yeah, if you like the sound of that, like, subscribe. Thanks for listening and we'll see you soon.